Good afternoon everyone, it is David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast as we are keeping an eye on Friday. A big severe weather event could be unfolding across the Midwest and also for the Deep South with a threat for tornadoes, strong winds, and large hail. Now if you're new and you really like these detailed weather videos and weather updates, please consider subscribing if you're new hit the like button, and also share this video with your family and friends on social media. So here's a current detailed look at the latest water vapor satellite imagery provided by TropicalTidbits.com at Levi Cowan. And we can see what's going on right now in the weather pattern because there are big changes coming and it's going to be a very dangerous Friday ahead for the Midwest. And the reason why is we have this upper level low pressure system right now impacting California. California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, this low pressure system will be moving into the Midwest by the time we go into, say, Thursday and Friday, and that's going to allow for some cyclogenesis to occur with a surface low, and on top of that, we're going to increase the deep layer shear, the moisture, and that's going to lead to the threat for a pretty big severe weather event on Friday. But before we do get chit-chatting about that severe weather event on Friday for the Midwest and the Deep South, Let's take a current look at our latest National Weather Service watches, warnings, and advisories because there's a lot going on right now in California. We got wind advisories, we got flood watches, winter storm warnings. I mean, we have been through this many times already with some wild, wicked weather across the West. Literally through the entire month of March, we haven't really had a lot of dry days calm, quiet, tranquil weather. So very active weather here in Nevada. Also for the four corners, high wind watches, high wind warnings potentially likely along to go with red flag warnings. I did talk to one of my friends, Gabe Nagel, that is actually out of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he was saying winds could gust between 60 to 70 miles an hour from the southwest, so some big-time winds down there in the desert southwest ahead of what is going to be a pretty serious storm system on Friday. So now, let's take a look at the latest European model for Thursday afternoon all the way through Friday and even into Saturday as we track that big, nasty cyclogenous cyclone over the northern plains that will bring some big time severe weather across much of the Midwest, including for portions of the upper Midwest and the deep south on Friday. So let's take a look. So for Thursday afternoon, of course, the European model has a surface low that rapidly deepens over Colorado, over portions of Nebraska, as well as northwestern Kansas. This is what we call a Colorado Rocky Low, or a lee side cyclogenous surface low that typically rapidly deepens on the leeward side of the Rockies ahead of a trough, because when you get falling heights, the air is rising, and when the air is rising, well, you get pressure response at the surface, and that's lower pressure that develops that increases the pressure gradient which then increases the low level flow at the surface and that brings in moisture so let's go forward and take a look at what is going to be happening on friday so for friday morning the surface low is at 996 millibars so not as deep as what we would like it to be but at least it's not like 976 millibars right that would be a lot of a bigger concern because there would be more um influx of moisture going northward but nevertheless there will be a deepening cyclone here enough to where we will get some showers and thunderstorms popping up for friday morning even across the upper midwest and the ozarks we get some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms some of these could be severe, capable of producing some hail, some strong winds, and maybe an isolated spin-up or two. But it's really Friday afternoon when all hell will break loose. All right, so by 18Z Friday, this is early Friday afternoon on the, uh, uh, for March 31st, and we can see lots of 
of coverage here of showers and thunderstorms, especially down here in Arkansas into northeastern Texas. We have one cluster of storms that could pop up. These, again, could be capable of producing tornadoes, lots of hail, and lots of wind. Not only that, we have several storm clusters here, especially over St. Louis, Missouri. I have a great friend of mine that lives there. His name is john 542 e on Discord, and he's really concerned about this. This could be a really big event for you, brother, so make sure you are really in your storm shelter and you are ready um, to go just in case if severe weather hits your area. Make sure you have your storm shelter all ready to go. For Iowa, lots of severe weather there too along that surface low and then along that kind of uh, warm frontal boundary as that drapes across the Great Lakes region. This continues to be a big problem by Friday afternoon. So right around, say, 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening on Friday, look at that. Still some showers and thunderstorms here. A big deal all the way across the deep south. So it's really in this area that I'm really concerned about for a big threat for severe weather, including, again, lots of tornadoes, damaging winds, and some big-time hail, possibly 2-plus inches in diameter in some of the the locations, especially from Missouri southward, where we have more appreciable instability and moisture. That system moves into the Great Lakes by Friday night into Saturday, bringing some heavy snowfall for Wisconsin, for, say, Minnesota, like La Crosse. But look at this. Across uh, Michigan, we could be looking at some moderate to heavy rainfall, lots of thunderstorms across Indiana, Ohio, Tennessee. Some of these, again, could be quite severe. So definitely uh, make sure you're staying up to date here on the channel for more on that. And then that continues to move into the Northeast. All right, bringing uh, some showers and thunderstorms, but a lot of this will already occlude. So the severe threat really is going to be augmented, especially on Friday from, say, Iowa southward into the Midwest and the Deep South, where, again, a big severe weather event could be coming. All right, so how much snowfall could you see? Now, I know uh, we're talking about severe weather, but we also want to talk about the winter side of things because there's going to be a lot of snow with this storm system. Yep, it's still that time of year where snow does fall. In the United States. So the higher elevations across the West, especially for California, like the Sierras, could get 60 inches of snowfall through the next 10 days. And also for the Oregon, Washington area, more snow on the way. This is really good news for California standards. I mean, our drought severity index is really dropping quickly because of how much snowfall our rivers are really high, which is not a good thing. And these rivers are likely to get higher and higher because we have more rain falling. Okay, and that's just going to cause more problems. But look at this. More snow for the northern plains here, anywhere between possibly about a foot or so. If we actually back it out specifically through the next five days. Let's just do that. Five days, anywhere between maybe 6 to 12 inches of snow from, say, Wisconsin into portions of Iowa. Also, for northern Michigan, you might get about 12 inches of snow out of this. But again, for the mountains of the west, big-time snowfall amounts are expected. And that's really going to help out the water supply in California. Now, when we take a look at our severe weather, again, kind of backtracking like we just um, explained right again, 30% significant, all right, not significant, sorry about that, but a large deviated area of 30% for severe weather all the way from northeastern Texas, northern Louisiana, into Arkansas, northwestern Mississippi, western Tennessee, um, if you're in Missouri, especially in the St. Louis metro area, could be hit really hard with this severe weather event. Central and east, uh, western um, portion there of Illinois and southeastern um, Iowa could really get slammed pretty hard. I've been talking to Fancy Hippie and Fire Ant on Discord about this, and they are all agreeing that this could be a moderate risk. Not specifically um, Fancy Hippie, but specifically Fire Ant. When I talked to him yesterday, he was saying, Saying that we could have a moderate risk so we will see how that all pans out in my personal opinion i really do not think it's going to go moderate based on the kinematics that i've seen the thermodynamics just the ingredients are not quite there for a moderate risk 
as of right now, but that might change in days to come. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But right now, I'm holding this off at an enhanced risk, I predict, for day three, all right, which are really common. So now, another thing we really need to look at here is the flood concerns, heavy rainfall. It's time and time again. California is under a marginal and slight risk for heavy rainfall for today because we could be looking at two to four inches of rainfall in California with some of the mountainous terrain, five plus inches of rain. That's a lot of water, I'm telling you right now, and that's going to exacerbate the runoff the flood concern, the mudslides, debris flows. I mean, we've been through this enough, so everyone knows what to do by this point in time. More um, heavy rain and flood concerns for southern Alabama, southern Georgia, and western panhandle of Florida due to some thunderstorms that are anticipated. A marginal risk is issued for tomorrow for California from Wednesday all the way into Thursday, so we're, we're in some serious trouble here with more heavy rainfall and flood concerns that are on the way, unfortunately. So make sure you are prepared to evacuate if you are in a flood-prone area because the rivers and streams are likely to come up. So day three, there is a marginal risk for heavy rainfall and flooding for central Iowa, southern um, Minnesota, as well as central and western Wisconsin and northeastern uh, Nebraska under that uh, marginal risk. Now, on our way from that to taking a look at our Climate Prediction Center, this is as extreme as the weather pattern can actually get for early April. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, I, I mean, you can't get any worse than this or more extreme than what you're seeing here. I mean, you're going from summer-like temperatures potentially in the deep south and the southeastern U.S. to seeing temperatures that are winter-like, bone cold, and really cold temperatures, 40s, 30s, and 40s across the Pacific Northwest, 40s and 50s across California and Nevada. I mean, you don't see that in early April. Not do rarely. I mean, last April, we were downright warm. We were like in the 70s and 80s already. This year, 40s and 50s, so much colder likely below for the next six to ten days over the western half of the u.s includes new mexico warmer than average likely for the central and southeastern u.s it will feel like summer thanks to the ridge of high pressure that has been relentless across the eastern seaboard this season so far on top of that the 8 to 14 day t temperature outlook is likely below for much of the west likely above for much of the east kind of the same old game uh ball rolling here with a 70 to 80 percent chance of that occurring now rainfall uh, i'm used to seeing green i am it's normal to us i guess this is our new normal right likely above average 60 to 70 percent chances of above average rainfall through the next 10 days for california also likely above average for much of the areas here central u.s Deep South and the Northern Plains likely above. But look at this. For New Mexico, unfortunately, equal chances. But looks like it is going to lean above average through the 8 to 14 day forecast for your area in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And also likely above average for the Central and Southern U.S. Now, before I do in the video, folks, if you guys are new and you absolutely love the content, you like the videos, the detail that I put into these videos, you like the enthusiasm, you like the interaction during my live streams. By the way, everyone is begging me to go live on Friday. I don't, I cannot make a promise on that right now. Right now, driving is more on my top priority list, but if necessary, I am willing to go live in an emergency situation on the severe weather threat for Friday. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But also you can only do that if you do subscribe, hit the like button and share this video with their family and friends on social media. Not only that, Evan James put together one of the best weather websites you can possible. Evan James has put together Mesovort WX weather website. It is 100% free to join today. All you have to do is enter into the Mesovort WX with a free account, okay? Free account, it is no cost whatsoever. Just log in, create a free account today, and you'll be able to view people's posts. You're going to be able to follow them. It's like Twitter, but 
in Evan's world. Oops, sorry, I hit the mic there. So be sure you do check that out. It means a lot to me, and it also means a lot to Evan James since he is the host and the founder of the website. So be sure you do check that out um, after watching this video. And not only that, you could also participate in our Weather Force Discord server. You cannot miss out at all on the server it is a lot of fun we have great members a lot of interaction great staff team that loves to interact with you so if you want to participate there is a link in the description below this video but anyways if you did enjoy the video share like and subscribe and i will be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed update on more of this severe weather event coming for friday for the midwest and the deep south